Hello there! Today, I'm going to be going over the development of Super Mario Odyssey The Lost Kingdoms, which is a ROM hack that took around 5 months. But before I get into anything about Lost Kingdoms, I should give some context to people who have never seen it before. Super Mario Odyssey The Lost Kingdoms was not the first mod I ever made. The first mod I ever made was this, and it's hot garbage. It is no fun to play through, and it's just a compilation of random blocks. It's cool that I made something, but it's not actually any good. The second mod I made, however, used custom models, and it was arguably even worse than the first one. Just because it's new doesn't mean it was good. This was a port of Yoshi Star Galaxy, and the video speaks for itself. It looks terrible, it plays terrible, there's nothing to do, it's just not fun. Burn it with fire. However, those were really old, and by now I've gotten a lot better, and as you can probably tell by this footage of Cloudy Court Galaxy, which is the mod I did before Lost Kingdoms, I've gotten a lot better at Odyssey modding. So, definite improvement there. Um, but yeah, that's just some context for the people who have never seen my content before, or Odyssey ROM hacking, or anything of the sort. Time to get into the actual development of Super Mario Odyssey The Lost Kingdoms. The first thing I will be doing is playing through some beta builds of the game. This is version 0 0.5, which is around 3 months old. This is the first version I ever sent to anyone, and it's super unfinished. I'll put a comparison between the current version and the old version of the opening of the game, and you can just tell how ugly it was back then. Also, only around half of the kingdoms were done, and there was only four new sub-areas compared to the 15 of the final version. This version is just everything from the new version, but without some stuff and a whole lot uglier. If I compare blue canopies in this version to the newer version, it you can see the difference between them. It's pretty kind of subtle, but it the new version just looks so much better. Um, in Seaside Kingdom, or Bowser's Magma Moat, you can- I originally used lava bubbles, and didn't have that little water layer, and at first glance, it may actually seem like the older version of Seaside Kingdom was superior to the newer one, however, it very much wasn't, because the older version, it was impossible to beat the boss, and there was tons of areas you couldn't get to, and it was just kind of a mess, so I'm glad I changed that. And just as another comparison, the newer version has the same gushins, but still the lava, so it's and you can go under the water with the pipes, which I didn't get footage of, but whatever. Um Yeah, so version zero point five is interesting. Um Ruined Kingdom, or White Castle I believe it's called. Um this older version looked Oh boy, it hurts your eyes. And later, I actually made a another new version, which was even worse than the current one. And then I finally got around and actually made the one I use right now, which I'm honestly not super happy with either, but it's a whole lot better than this eye death. So, that's something. Alright, on to Super Mario Odyssey The Lost Kingdom 0.6. This version is pretty similar to 0 0.5, but still a whole lot better. In Seaside Kingdom, or Bowser's Magma Moat, you can tell I went with almost the final design here, and it works a whole lot better. Over in Sand Kingdom, you can tell just how different it is from the final version, and this version was terrible. It was a pain to get around anywhere, it was full of glitches, there was tons of impossible moons, it was just... ah, it was not fun. And I went with a much more subtle actual gameplay edit in the final version, just to make it even kind of fun. In Cascade Kingdom, it looked a lot different in this version than the final one. They both had the same magma feel, but the newer version has a dark, cloudy area, and you can't see super far, and this one is super bright and glowy. And there's probably a lot of you looking at this and saying, wait, you changed it from the cool looking glowy one? That one looks so much better. And the reason I changed it is because the glowy one had a problem 
where if you played it on any scenario other than after breaking the moon rock, it would cause tons of graphical glitches and be a mess, so I was forced to change it. Aside from those, there isn't a whole lot of differences between 0.5 and 0.6. This is a pretty big leap, but we're going to 0.9 now. The reason I'm not doing 0.7 is because I lost the backup for it, and we're not doing 0.8 because 0.8 and 0.9 are basically identical, except for the fact that 0.9 has German translations and 0.8 does not. Back in the earlier builds, Luncheon Kingdom did not have rain, and this version was the one that added the rain. To be honest, the real only big difference was the amount of sub-areas. Between 0.6 and 0.9, there was six new sub-areas that got added. And there is more to talk about, but I don't want to leave you guys bored talking about the small little details between all the different versions. So now I'm going to jump into unused content. Starting off boring, we have one of the most basic unused objects. Six different colored blocks connected to each other. This was just a test for texturing and didn't serve any other purpose. And this one is kind of interesting. This is a giant sphere of sky, I guess. This was a test for custom skyboxes, and I scrapped using this one even though it looks cool, because the texture doesn't line up on both sides, leaving this super ugly, like, I don't even know what to call it, but part where it doesn't loop over right, and it just looks super terrible, so I never used this. This one was supposed to be a form of the bullet bill object that runs on a rail so that it can go in one straight path. But I cancelled this one so early I never even replaced the model, and it just uses something from Sweet Sweet Galaxy. Now this one is especially interesting. This is a few custom models for a sub-area I scrapped entirely. I got pretty far in it, but threw it out at the end. The reason I threw it out is because of an extreme amount of game crashes. 90% of the time when you ran through this level your game would crash for seemingly no reason. So it was super annoying. This was a port from a galaxy stage that was kind of a port of a sunshine stage. And I am kind of sad I never finished this one because it would have been really fun. And here is one more scrap sub area that is nowhere near as interesting as the other one. At first glance, this looks like just a bunch of random walls and platforms, and that's essentially what it was. It was originally supposed to be used for a dual Mario section, which was also a scrapped concept. What happened was I duplicated the player object, so that what would happen is there'd be two Marios running around in the same level, and each side of this level would have different objects in it, and you'd have to navigate both through it without either of them dying. However, this concept was so glitchy, I had to scrap it. If you looked at the Super Mario 3D World X Super Mario Odyssey The Lost Kingdoms trailer, you may have noticed I had the dual Mario thing in it, and I'm really sad I didn't get to add that to the game. It's just so glitchy, it would not have been worthwhile. These next objects are actually kind of interesting. The Sky Desert sub-area, a port from Super Mario Galaxy, is one of my favorites, and it was originally going to have a whole extra planet in it. However, I got rid of it because there was no good way for me to fit it in. But why did I put in all the effort to import these models for it anyway if I was not going to use it? Well actually, this sub-area I made long before Lost Kingdoms, and I always wanted to finish it, but I never did. So, I realized, perfect opportunity to use those models I already imported and put them into Lost Kingdoms. So that sub-area is way older than Lost Kingdoms. However, I, I put it in there as a little, just extra thing, because I had it lying around and thought it might be fun. And that's everything I have for unused content. However, there is a little more I want to show you. A question a lot of you might have been thinking about is where did I get the idea for Lost Kingdoms from? Well, actually, the idea came from a small mini-project that I started as a joke and never planned on posting. I, I sat down one day and tried to think of a new mod idea, and thought, huh, it might be kind of funny if I added lava to Seaside Kingdom, and so I did. I took that kingdom and added lava to it, and it was kind of terrible, but fun anyway. And then I decided, hey, there's a few other kingdoms I could do some weird little edits to, and put them all together as one mod. And eventually, I decided, hey, this concept is actually kind of fun, and I tried to put in more effort to make it a full thing. And I did that, and here is Lost Kingdoms. 
So that's really the origin story of Lost Kingdoms. There is no, like, big, I'm gonna make an Odyssey Encore mode, whatever. And actually, that's a comparison I heard a lot of people use. It's like the Encore mode of Sonic Mania, which actually I kind of agree with. That's a pretty good comparison for it. But, yeah, that's basically the origin story for it. The last thing I want to do is go over all of the folders for Super Mario Odyssey The Lost Kingdoms. Layout data, the first one you'll find, contains different images. For example, the different colored background on the title screen and all the times the logo gets replaced throughout the game. Localized data is where all of the text gets changed. Inside here you'll find layout message, stage message, and system message for both English and German. And if you extract those SCS files, you will find different text files. The next folder is movie data, which contains all of the previews for the cutscenes. The next folder is object data, which is a really weird one. This is where every single 3D model is stored, and because of that, this folder has 134 different items in it, making for a really large file size, and I'm sorry about that. Sound data is where all of the game's custom music is stored. If you go into sound data and then stream, you'll find a lot of BFSTM files, and every single one of these is a custom song import. And just to give you guys a perspective, making one of these files takes anywhere from like 30 minutes to an hour, and there's 60 of these. So it took a very long time to get all of these custom sound files imported. Stage data is basically where all of the stage layouts are kept. So all data for sub areas and kingdom edits will be stored in here. That was about everything I had to say about Super Mario Odyssey The Lost Kingdoms. It was a lot of fun to make and I'm really glad people have been enjoying it and I'm really glad you bothered to sit through this video about how it was created. I really hope this encourages you to make your own Odyssey mods if you want, and if you do make your own, send them to me and I'll be happy to play them. I already have my next mod for after Super Mario Odyssey The Lost Kingdoms planned out, so if you want to keep up to date with that, make sure to subscribe, and if you want to be extra dedicated, hit the notification bell. I'll give you a little hint about what it is. It's a remaster of a mod I talked about in the beginning of this video during the context section. So, look forward to that. And thank you for watching. Peace! And also thank you for 500 subscribers, I never expected to reach that. I also forgot to put this in the original recording, so I'm throwing this in on the end. Bye!